Our next story is the haunting and bizarre case of a lost little girl. Four-year-old Marlena Childress vanished from her home in Union City, Tennessee, on April 16, 1987. Marlena was a shy little girl, but on that Thursday before Easter, she was eagerly looking forward to a weekend Easter egg hunt. Marlena was seen in her front yard and at a local store during the day of April 16th, but by mid-afternoon, she had vanished. Her distraught mother, Pam Bailey, contacted the police at 4.15 p.m. I don't care if somebody got her, if anything's done to them. I just want her back. Pam Bailey was interviewed the day after Marlena disappeared. And I know Marlena wants to come back. She doesn't want to stay with anybody else. And she's probably scared. Could it start right for anybody to keep somebody else's child? Pam said she had last seen Marlena in their front yard at 3.30 in the afternoon. Shortly afterwards, she heard the squeal of skidding car tires. I was in the kitchen, and I heard a car. And, uh, well, I saw the car from the kitchen window. And um, I thought they might have hit her or something because uh, somebody slammed on the brakes, I thought. And um, I come in here, and I looked out the window, and um, I could see the back end of it. And I opened up the door, and I couldn't see Marlena. Police organized a search of the neighborhood and then of the city. Marlena Childress was nowhere to be found. Newspapers nationwide picked up the story of the missing child. The strain was too much for Pam Bailey. She checked herself into a local hospital for several days, suffering from exhaustion. Nine days after Pam Bailey left the hospital, she made the shocking announcement that her daughter Marlena was dead. The entire city was stunned when Pam said that she herself had accidentally killed Marlena and then thrown her body into the nearby Obion River. Immediately, hundreds of rescue squad workers and volunteers were dispatched to drag the Obion River and comb its banks. Despite a five-day search, no trace of little Marlena Childress was found. Pam was charged with second-degree murder, and bond was set at $100,000. The judge ordered that she be placed under observation at a state mental institution. Incredibly, before she was even admitted to the institution, Pam Bailey changed her story again. She now insisted that she had not killed her daughter, and that her confession had been coerced by Stan Kavnis, an investigator working on Marlena's case at Pam's own request. She gave me of her own free will because there was no coercion. At a press conference, Stan Cadmus played a five-minute excerpt of Pam Bailey's confession to support his claim that it had not been coerced. I threw her in myself. You're not making this up just because you're afraid? No, I threw her in. At that time, I had just gotten out of the hospital. I had been in the hospital for two weeks. And I was on quite a bit of prescription stuff that gave me nerves and everything. And uh, so uh, he said that if I'd stick with him, that he wouldn't let me go to a lecture chair. And during that time, I didn't know. I didn't know any better. I thought I was going to a lecture chair for something I hadn't even done. I was talking to a Pam Bailey who expressed a lot of guilt and who expressed a lot of remorse. She described very vividly that she lost her temper, and then she was sorry she lost her temper, and then she panicked. He was telling me there was physical evidence that Marlena was there, and that somebody saw me do it. And so I just went along with everything he said. And he said, you can't make it out to be a cold-blooded murder, just say it was an accident that you hit her. To this day, Marlena Childress's body has not been found. Pam Bailey has never been indicted for the murder of her daughter. Pam continues to deny having any involvement in Marlena's disappearance. And several reported sightings of Marlena lend hope that she may indeed still be alive. The first sighting occurred just six days after Marlena disappeared. Memphis, Tennessee, 100 miles from Marlena's home in Union City. On April 22, 1987, Two women and two children walked into Jean's hairstyle salon. Can I help you? I need to get this little girl's haircut. One woman seemed to be in her 20s, the other in her 60s. 
The two children were a boy about six years old and a girl around four. As soon as the little girl sat in my chair, she started crying for her mommy. And at the time, she was looking straight up at me, hollering for her mom, which it upset me because the two ladies did not want to console the child in any way. And she was very upset. And my station is right next to Gail's. And I was working on a lady at the time. And, uh, I could, you know, get a good glimpse at her as she was crying. And I can't see uh, a parent standing up and not consoling the child at the time. They act like there weren't the parents of the child. Marlena, if you be a good girl, we'll take you to the movies. The older lady handed her a pad, but the child didn't take it. And. Uh, she did say, Marlena, if you're good, we will take you to a movie. That same morning, Gail stopped at a nearby convenience store during her break. There was a newspaper in front of me, and I glanced down at it. Marlena's picture was there, and I said, you know, that looks exactly like the child, you know, the hair that I just cut. I think we should call the police. I think so. Would you like to use the phone? Yes. After she called the local police, Gail showed Janice the newspaper. When I saw the picture on the paper, I was positive that that was Marlena that was in the beauty shop. After uh, uh, visiting the, the beauty shop uh, and talking with the ladies and showing the photo of Marlena and everything, I, I believe the ladies had seen Marlena. And uh, I had a... Wade Strickland launched his own investigation into his granddaughter's disappearance. He came to suspect that a waitress in the area was somehow involved. He learned she had left town the morning after Marlena disappeared, then returned several days later. Wade Strickland asked the two Memphis beauticians to come to the restaurant where the woman worked. ...in here and see if you recognize the woman that's in your beauty shop. That's her. Are you sure? I'm positive. It's definitely her. So I question these people over and over and over about this. You know, do they have a shadow of a doubt about this? And they said, no way. We're 110% sure. Because the features this lady has, you don't forget. You people look at and see if you... Wade knew there had also been a little boy in the beauty shop. In your beauty shop. Following a hunch, he brought pictures of six young boys to the salon in Memphis. This looks like him. That's him right there. And they picked out a little boy. And this little boy was the son of the waitress that they previously picked out in the, the restaurant. So you had mother and son. And they said there's no question about it. This lady was uh, questioned about this and, in fact, put on a polygraph machine by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and I asked if, in fact, she was in the beauty parlor or if she had uh, Marlena Childers in the beauty parlor, and she said no, and she passed the lie detector. Gail and Janice began to receive threatening phone calls at the beauty salon, most of them from the same woman. Jean's hairstyles may help you. Tell Janice I know she has a grandson. I know where she is. Another one of their phone calls again. It's scary. We're touching somebody. There's somebody out there that is afraid that we're getting close. And I hope we are. Marlene Highline. Wade Strickland never gave up. He fielded hundreds of phone calls. Finally, in September of 1989, a tip from across the state gave him renewed hope. What makes you think this was Marlena? Mom, can we go down there and look at some stuff? If it's stay in this aisle, don't go off. A young mother in Lenore City, Tennessee, claimed she had seen Marlena in a local department store. Brandon! Marlena had been playing in the store with a woman's children. Kids, y'all come on now. 
Brandon, I told you. I turned to catch the first child coming around the aisle, and it wasn't my kid. <laughs> and I, you know, it kind of embarrassed me, so I, I decided to speak to her and tell her that she was cute. And there wasn't too much time lapse between that, you know, just a few seconds until the woman called for. Come here. Right now. The little girl looked back and just at me for a second, but as she was going off with her, with just an empty, spacey look in her eyes, she was reluctant to go. But she, uh, apparently, she was afraid not to. <laughs> Ten days later, Amy received a missing persons flyer in the mail. She and her son both recognized Marlena as the little girl they had seen in the store. The case of little Marlena Childress raises many disturbing and unanswered questions. Was Marlena the little girl in the department store? Was she the same child the two Memphis beauticians had seen more than two years earlier? Or is Marlena Childress dead? I can't sit here today and say I know what happened to Marlena. I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows other than Pam. I didn't hurt Marlena in any way. And uh, all I need is for people to help me look for her. That's all I need. I don't believe it was a murder. I believe the child is missing. Uh, I'm going to continue to believe that until either we find the child or somebody finds a body. Marlena Childress was four years old when this photograph was taken. She disappeared on April 16, 1987. This is how Marlena might look today at age seven. She has brown hair and blue eyes. Her bottom baby teeth were capped in silver, and there was a chance she could still have some of those capped teeth. Marlena's grandparents are offering a $30,000 reward for her safe return, no questions asked. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Marlena Childress, please contact the O'Brien County, Tennessee Sheriff's Department or call our toll-free number, 1-800-876-5353.